Welcome back to Primary Teaching with Dom. Hello and welcome back to Primary Teaching with Dom. I hope you're having a great day so far. I'm having a good day myself or good morning or wherever you are at this moment in time. So I have quite a few um, children's literatures that I have. Um, now that I started my course I had to buy a quite buy some buy a few and luckily for me I've been given um, some vouchers as well um, a part of my course so I can actually buy some more books which I'm going to do um, next week or so but for now I have three books here that I think are my like my top three at this moment in time and I'm going to discuss them a little bit and actually hopefully you will like them and want to push them yourself so let's get on to our video the first book that I'm going to be showing you is Room on the Broom. This book here, hopefully you can see it. Hopefully, here. This book is by Julia Donaldson and Alex Scheffler. I'm so sorry to you if I've said it wrong. This book I found quite amazing and especially this can go all the way up into year six. So it's actually even beyond that, even in secondary school but you don't, you don't normally get that. But this is a really good um, children's literature because there's so much things you can actually do with it. You can use it for so many lessons. You can use it for, um, especially for English, I would say, actually. You can use this to be creative. They can get even art. They can actually draw the witch. You can give them descriptions of the witch um, and get them to draw it. In this book, you can get them to write poetry. You can get them to write a, dis a um, a diary entry about the witch and her travels or the cat um, that travels with her you can actually get them to write a letter a persuasive argument to say why the witch didn't do it or anything like that I really do think it's a great read this book would be great especially in Key Stage 1 and EYFS to have as the books at the end of the day to read and with some of them you can even get the children to even read it with you so as you would do and let me read the beginning section for you like this as a teacher so you show them the pitch of the witch and <laughs> the cat and then the witch had a cat and a very tall hat and a long ginger hair which she wore in a plait. How the cat purred and how the witch grinned as they sat on their broomstick and flew through the wind. But how the witch whirled and how the cat spat when the wind blew so wildly it blew off the hat. So it's also a rhyme book as well which I loved as well. Because you can kind of sing it <laughs> and the children really like it but with me um, as you just saw I need to get into the rhyme a bit more. But Oh, that rhymed as well. <laughs> but yes, this is a great, great book and it does have the rhyming in there and it's such a book that will flow and the children will really, really love. So I recommend that book. Hopefully you saw it. The next book, now this book is a bit more advanced and you could still read it to children but it would be more of a slow book to read and this is called Witch for a Week. So we've got Witch for a Week. This is by Kay Umansky. This wonderful, 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 wonderful author came to my university and she was reading extract of this book. Now, I'm not a person, I never really heard of this um, children's author before, I'm so sorry, because I was not well versed with, um, child with children's authors at all. But when she came and I sat there and she was reading this, I really wish I could insert clips. It was the most amazing experience and I was compelled to buy this book. As she was reading it, I was thinking, oh yeah, that's definitely the book I want to get. And this book would be something you put into your reading book corner and have it as a stand. Um, or you could even read it as a whole group, whole class reading at the end of the day. So I'm just going to tell you what it's about. I'll read you the blurb. When Elsie Pickles offers to house it, the mysterious home of a local witch, Magnus is sharper, sharp. She has no idea what she's getting herself into. Left with, left with talking raven and a scruffy dog for company, a magical tower that has a mind of its own and a book of instructions called Everything You Need to Know. What could possibly go wrong? But Elsie soon finds out that, work, that looking after Magnus's home isn't as easy as she first thought, and then that's the picture of that of the of the um, of the person she's looking after. This is a great great book to read. 
it is not many it's not like massive amount of words on each page it's so good to read and I really would recommend that um, more recommended in key stage 2 but you can still introduce it to year 1 and actually read it to them so great book now the last book and I know many of you many of you probably heard of this book and I did this for my interview which I'll talk about a bit more in a, in in an upcoming video The Day the Crowns Quit by Drew by Drew Day Walt I in all in this video I cannot pronounce all these three authors names and it's so bad but just forgive me this book is amazing it's absolutely a gorgeous read it is so funny I remember being in my PGC course and for English we had to bring in books um, and I didn't bring in a book because I didn't know any children's literature but my friend did and she brought this book in and I was reading it and I was laughing it is so funny um, and I, as, as I said I did this for my interview and I actually passed my teacher interview with this book as the main focus what this book does, it goes through crayons and they and they actually send a letter. They send a letter to Duncan and they explain why they're quitting, why they're leaving, uh, why, why are you using me? And I'll read you a little page. Um, this is the black crayon. It says, hi Duncan, I hate being used to draw the outline of things. Things that are coloured in by other colours, all with, all of which think they are brighter than me. It's not fair. When you, you, when you use me to draw a nice beach ball and then fill in the other colours of the ball with all the other crayons, how about a black beach ball sometime? Is that too much to ask? Your friend, black crayon. So he's complaining that. There's no, um, when he's drawing a beach ball, he doesn't draw a whole black one, but he draws it with an outline and then all the other colours in the middle. This is a great, great book. And I know there's another book called The Day the Crayons Came Back, which I'm going to purchase. That's going to be my next one. I'm going to read that one as the sequel. It is so good to get, children's in, get children involved in different aspects of English and art and drama. It is so good. It's cross-curricular. It is amazing. So if you have the opportunity to get this book, this one, and this one, please do get them. They're really, really good. And those are my top three currently. So it might change. And I might do a monthly one where I chain, where every single month I'll do, I'll pick three different books. I don't know, comment if you would like that one and I'll try and get that done. So I will say then, for April, these are my three top 10, in April, these are my top three books to purchase for children. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. It was just a light um, one and I saw these books around and I was thinking, well, it will be beneficial to give you some books to take into schools and have on your bookshelf or to read as a whole group or maybe even, even in guided reading, especially that one you can read for guided reading, which will be amazing to do. So, I do hope you have a great day, morning, afternoon, evening, night. I'm planning on doing all of those right now. Um, well, not currently right now. I plan on doing all of those soon. I shall see you in the next one. Bye.